Hey, hey everybody. Happy Tuesday, pre-inauguration day. Glad to see some of my folk who always attend my Instagram lives on, so thank you. We'll get started in just a bit. So I, I I have a topic today that I um, have become more interested in discussing and understanding. Um, and so I'm happy to dive into uh, a little bit of the research that I've done for this particular um, Instagram live. Um, I first want to start with uh, our typical kickoff, you know, during the past few months, Whitman Walker's Community Health Department has expanded its outreach efforts to the social media platforms of Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. We cover various topics about HIV, STI, sexual health practices, access to care, social determinants of health, and general public health interventions. Our series of outreach sessions are also focusing on the current pandemic, COVID-19, and ways that you can manage your sexual and mental health during this time. The community health team at Whitman Walker is here to educate and support you. So thanks again for being here. Um, today, we're going to talk about a topic that has been at the top of my mind, as I mentioned. Um, ever since the pandemic um, began and we had indica indications that this was going to impact our um, economic systems that we have in place, um, I knew there would be financial impacts to everyone. And, and what typically happens in these type of scenarios is that LGBTQ folks are more likely to be impacted uh, for, from an economic down, downturn, which we are experiencing right now. Um, so I want to talk a little bit about you know homelessness, but specifically how that affects LGBTQ youth. Um, as mentioned in one of my previous live lives, I think it was maybe two um, lives ago, uh, housing is a social determinant of health. So a lack, the lack of housing is a social determinant of health that can affect the well-being of any individual, but particularly LGBTQ folks, folks who identify as LGBTQ. So according to a recent study from Chaplin, Chapman Hall at the University of Chicago, LGBTQ young people are 120% more likely to experience homelessness than non-LGBTQ youth. So right off the bat, these young people are presented with an uneven playing field. It is estimated that about 7% of our uh, youth in the United States are LGBTQ, while 40% of the youth, youth that are experiencing homelessness are LGBTQ. That is obviously a disproportionate number given the population. So why do we think um, LGBTQ youth experience, you know, experience homelessness? Um, a lot of conversations indicate that, you know, family conflict is the most common cause of all of of youth homelessness. I shouldn't say all, but that is the most common, con the most kind of indicator of uh, youth homelessness. So for LGBTQ youth in particular, that conflict tends to be over, you know, sexual orientation or gender identity. In fact, according to the Trevor Project, family rejection on the basis of sexual orientation or gender identity can have extreme effects on LGBTQ youth. So not just homelessness, there are other impacts that, you know, family rejection uh, could have on LGBTQ youth. So one study compared LGBTQ youth um, who reported, you know, family rejection during adolescence um, to their peers who reported no levels of family rejection. So the study found that LGBTQ youth were 8.4 times more likely to attempt to have attempted suicide, um, 5.9 times more likely to report high levels of depression, 3.4 times more likely to use illegal drugs, and 3.4 times more likely to report having engaged in unprotected sexual intercourse. So those numbers indicate the, the significant impact that family rejection has on our LGBTQ youth and 
youth and homelessness is is just one of those um small factors that that we that we have to deal with in uh society so as a result of family rejection that can include you know discrimination uh criminalization and a host of other factors lgbtq youth represent 40 percent of the homeless population so homeless youth population i should say so of that population 60 percent are likely to attempt suicide because of their particular, uh, because of their, their circumstances. So while rejection is the most frequently cited reason for LGBTQ to experience homelessness, it's not the only one. According to service providers, additional reasons include, you know, aging out of the foster care children. We have some um, children who, who hit that 17 mark and they're no longer uh, able to, to remain in, in, you know, foster care facilities and housing until they found themselves um, uh, experiencing homelessness. Poverty is another one and, and conflicts in the home can also be another one. Often it's not that, that it's not one particular thing that causes homelessness, but it could be a combination of many things that cause this homelessness. So, um, Shelters are generally a good resource for LGBTQ um, people or, or the homeless community in general. Not only do they provide, you know, basic necessities of food, shelter, but they often um, are homes to other resources and services like medical care, referrals for substance abuse or mental health counseling and social service assistance. Um, some, a lot of the things that actually we offer here at Whitman Walker. Um, so... These shelters are important and they do save uh, countless lives. So at the end of this, I want to share some resources. If you know or are someone who is experiencing homelessness and you uh, consider yourself or identify as LGBTQ, then th these would be great resources for you. So um, the LGBTQ homeless population depends on these services. So that includes, you know, the resources I mentioned, housing, mental health counseling, substance, substance abuse counseling. And they, they depend on these perhaps even more than the general population because they're much more likely to suffer from these things disproportionately. Frequently, uh, homeless LGBTQ people have a greater difficulty finding shelters that accept and respect them. So that's also a thing they have to, we have to deal with. Um, LGBTQ individuals experiencing homelessness are often at a heightened risk for violence, abuse, exploitation compared to their heterosexual peers. So these are all uh, things that as a society we need to help overcome, help, help fix. And so I have a few resources that I, I want to share. But first, I want to specifically talk about challenges for our transgender population. Um, according to the Center for American Progress, one in three trans transgender people will experience homelessness at some point in their lives. That is a huge <laughs> number in terms of how many people who do not identify as transgender may experience homeless. So again, that is one in three transgender people may experience homelessness at some point in their lives. Once they are homeless, it's incredibly difficult for you know them or anyone to really get out of it. This is because shelters, places, generally offering the most assistance to, to you know homeless people under a single roof often turn away people who are transgender. Trans people often face a series of rejections in life due to their identity, and so they're often refused that basic human rights, which could be invalidating and, and traumatizing. So people who are turned away from shelters for being who they are are even sometimes worse off than who they were coming in um, for particular services. So um, luckily, we do have a few resources in the D.C. area um, that I like to share. Uh, first up is Casa Ruby. So Casa Ruby is a multicultural LGBTQ organization providing educational health, housing, and social services to individuals facing poverty. Um, and that's in the nation's capital in DC area. They focus on the needs of transgender, queer, and gender non-conforming, gay, lesbian, bisexual, as well as youth and LGBTQ immigrants. If you are in, interested in any services that Casa Ruby offers, you can visit their website at www.casaruby. Dot org. Um, another resource that I found to be very useful is Friendship Place. So Friendship Place 
is the premier housing service provider for people experiencing homelessness in the DC region. They actually have a particular focus for LGBTQ folks um, and, and their innovative customized per person focus programs empower participants to rebuild their lives, find homes, get jobs, and reconnect with friends and family in the community that they may have um, disconnected from due to their experiences. So if you're interested in friendship places, friendship place <laughs> service, uh, you can visit friendshipplace.org forward slash LGBTQ. And uh, another good service is Smile. So the Smile, and that's spelled S-M-Y-A-L. So the Smile Youth Houses accommodates 26 residents in a transitional living program. And that's from the youth ages of 18 to 24. The youth housing program provides a safe and stable shelter, um, food, case management services, crisis intervention, community support, and these are all for its, its residents. So their goal is to support uh, their residents as they accomplish you know, their, their individual goals to move through this, what they define as a three-tier progress system toward independent living. Residents will meet weekly with case managers and they collaborate to work on their individual service plan. So if you are interested in SMILE, you can visit their website at smile.org forward slash housing. Um, and if you have any more resources that you are aware of and know of, feel free to drop it in the comments. Um, again, we are constantly looking for resources, you know, to, to, to help out. But I also want to let you all know that Whitman Walker does offer mental health services. If you are seeking those, you can visit us at WhitmanWalker.org um, to seek out those services. Also, um, want to remind viewers that knowing your status is still one of the best ways to stop the spread of HIV. So Women Walker can help you uh, can help you identify what your HIV status is through our free HIV and STI testing services. Um, we are doing these services. They are by appointment at our Liz location, which is located in Northwest DC, as well as our Max Robinson Center location, which is located in Southeast DC. Again, to, you have to make an appointment, and to make an appointment, you call 202-797-4439. You can also access our PrEP services by calling 202-939-7690, and our PEP services by calling 202-797-4439. If you are newly diagnosed with HIV, you can call 202-797-4437, and we'll get someone to help you there. Also, we're still in a pandemic. I know you're probably tired of hearing everyone talk about this. Um, it is good news that we have the vaccine uh, rolling out. I'm getting frequent updates from um, DC government uh, about the availability and the way that they're rolling out resources. So um, if you are ages 65 and older or you are a healthcare worker, you can now get a vaccine in DC. So you can also visit, 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 visit vaccinate.dc.gov. Um, I know there is limited availability. The last I heard was that uh, the resources were um, gone at this time, but they, if you sign up for their mailing list, they'll email you when the vaccines are uh, available. So I def definitely encourage you to um, consider seeking out a vaccine if you are 65 or older or um, if you are a healthcare worker. Again, you can go to vaccinate.dc.gov. Also, I want you to remain six feet away from any other people when that is possible. Continue to wear your mask in public. Avoid places with, that have large crowds. Um, we know we have the inauguration tomorrow. There's a lot of talk about events and things like that that are happening. Um, I definitely encourage you to avoid uh, the large crowds and, and kind of watch it online or watch it on the TV as I plan to do. But um, yeah, avoid large crowds. Also continue to work from home if that's possible. Uh, remember to speak with your loved ones over FaceTime, Zoom. Um, I know a lot of us will be celebrating tomorrow, so that'll probably be a good time to practice that virtual uh, celebration. So continue to social distance. It's a way to care for your community and stay up to date on local, state, and national guidelines for testing, quarantine, 
general safety and also vaccine um, distribution. Continue to wash your hands, everybody, and please stay home if you don't feel well. Also, want to remind you all to follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at Whitman Walker and at Real Talk DC underscore to stay up to date with all things Whitman Walker Health. Again, you can visit our website at WhitmanWalker.org if you are interested in any of the resources I uh, mentioned. I also would like to just point out again that those LGBTQ resources that offer housing resources, again, are Casa Ruby, and you can visit them at CasaRuby.org, Friendship Place. You can visit them at FriendshipPlace.org forward slash LGBTQ. And then we have Smile, S-M-Y-A-L, that is smile.org forward slash housing. I hope this was useful um, and hope to see you again soon. Thank you.